Here's an example parallel line proof. You can see I have a quadrilateral. Uh, I'm given two angles congruent, angle 1 and angle 2, and I'm told that angle PQR is congruent to RSP, uh, so that is this larger angle here is congruent to that larger angle there. Uh, and I'm supposed to prove that the opposite sides are parallel. An alternate version of this could ask me to prove that it's a parallelogram, which would basically be showing that it's a quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel. I've simplified this proof just for the demonstration, but that's typically what you're going to be showing. And uh, here's the big thing. If you're going to prove lines parallel, you need to look for special angle relationships, such as congruent alternate interior angles, congruent corresponding angles, congruent alternate exterior angles, that type of thing. Uh, in particular, if you see congruent angles, and, and I've got uh, angle 1 here congruent to angle 2, if you see congruent angles that have a Z shape that zigzags around those angles, you can see that right here. Uh, that Z shape is usually a pretty good sign that you have alternate interior angles if, if those lines are forming the two angles that are congruent, and that is what I have in this case. Uh, so, congruent alternate interior angles shows me that the lines forming them are, par are parallel. Make sure you do your tracing. Notice that this is the two lines that are more vertical, uh, PQ and RS, not QR and PS. And as a result, um, I know that PQ and RS are going to be parallel. In fact, you can actually trace these lines out. You can show two lines cut by a transversal if you need to extend those. Um, so I'm going to say that PQ is congruent to RS, and the reason being, uh, we're going to say congruent alternate interior angles implies parallel lines. Okay, that could be written in if-then form in various ways, kind of a shortened version. You could say something like, uh, if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines forming them are parallel, which is a little misleading because technically there's, an, uh, there's a transversal in there as well. Or you could say something like, if two lines are cut by a transversal such that their alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines forming them are parallel, which is probably a little bit more exact. Uh, now, the second thing, you notice that I have these whole angles congruent. And notice that those whole angles are made of four lines, PQ, QR, RS, and PS. That's not that two lines cut by a transversal kind of idea that we've normally been looking for. However, you'll see that one and two are parts of those two congruent angles. What that tells me is if I subtract angle one from angle three, and if I subtract angle two from angle four, I'm left with congruent angles um, I'm left with congruent angles at 3 and 4. And so that's the subtraction property. So I can state that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4 by the subtraction property. And you'll notice, I know my picture is getting a little gummed up here, but you'll notice that I have uh, a second Z that zigzags around this angle right here and this angle right here. You can see this is my Z that cuts through there. I'll do this in a different color. And you'll see that includes that angle and that angle. So now suddenly these two horizontal lines are parallel to each other. Uh, so my conclusion here is that QR Oh, by the way, I made a mistake up here. I was supposed to be showing that PQ was parallel to RS. I've been doing too many con uh, congruence proofs here, but you'll, you'll see that I've concluded those are parallel lines. Uh, so now I'm concluding that QR is parallel to PS, and of course the same reason applies. I've got that Z shape there. You've got two lines cut by a transversal. The lines on either side of the transversal on the inside of the two lines are parallel. Those are alternate interior angles. So I've got congruent alternate interior angles implying parallel lines. And I've finished my proof. You'll see in this proof I'm told that angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary. No particular reason to think that they're congruent, but they are supplementary. And I want to show that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. Um, the important thing to notice is what type of angles these are. Um, if you notice, I have 
two parallel lines, or two lines that appear to be parallel. This line here and this line here. And I have a transversal that's cutting across right here. And you'll notice that these are two angles on the same side of the transversal. These are called same side interior angles. Uh, some textbooks call them consecutive interior angles. Uh, you'll see no reason to believe that they're congruent. However, we know that if those angles are supplementary, the lines forming them are parallel. Okay? Uh, I'm going to name these lines A, B, C, and D. Uh, I'm going to need to be able to name these for my proof. So, if you take a look, step two, um, I can immediately say that AB is parallel to CD. And the reason being, uh, supplementary same side interior angles implies that I have parallel lines. Well, you say, what's so important about having parallel lines? Well, the converse of that statement also works, and that is if I have parallel lines, I know that any same side interior angles formed by those lines will be supplementary as well. Well, you come over here and you look at this side. If these lines are parallel, which we now know, I can look at this as my transversal, and you can see right here, those are two same side interior angles. And, of course, as a result, those would be supplementary. So, very short proof. I can finish this out. Angle 1 is congruent to, I'm sorry, <laughs> angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And the reason being, uh, again, the converse of the statement. Now, I have parallel lines, and that is implying that the same side interior angles are supplementary. And that's all I need to do to finish this proof. This proof gives me a triangle. It's divided up into uh, a smaller triangle. Got a line there that appears to be parallel to the base, although we're not told that. Uh, I'm told that angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. Uh, they're not forming a straight angle or anything like that, so that's just kind of a fact I need to remember. 3 and 2 are also complementary. And looking at the statement, hopefully you pick up on something here. Both of those angles, angle 1 and angle 3, are complementary to the same angle. And if angles are complementary to the same angle, I know that they're going to be congruent to each other. So it turns out that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And so I'm going to note that fact down here. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And uh, the reason for that, of course, is... If angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. All right. Uh, now, if you take a look at these angles, remember I'm trying to prove lines parallel. Uh, when you're proving lines parallel, you need congruent angles. You need congruent alternate interior angles, or alternate exterior angles, or supplementary same side interior angles, or same side exterior angles. Or, in this case, uh, what we actually have are two angles that are in the same positions on the two lines. I'm trying to prove QT parallel to RS. Well, if I extend these lines here, you can see there's QT, there's RS, uh, this line right here helps form those angles. That's my transversal in this case. And you can see, this angle is on the top right on its line, that's on the top right on its line. Uh, those two angles are corresponding angles. And I've just shown that they're congruent corresponding angles. I'm literally done with my proof. If corresponding angles are congruent, I know the lines forming them are parallel. So QT is parallel to RS. And I know that congruent corresponding angles implies parallel lines. And that completes the proof. In this proof, you can see that I'm told that line TE is parallel to XW. So I'll label that. I'm also told that TE is congruent to XW. I'm supposed to prove that Tx is parallel to 
EW. Those are these two lines here. Um, if you notice, I have four lines making this quadrilateral, obviously. Um, usually when I show that I have parallel lines, I have two lines cut by a transversal. And in this case, the only situation I can have with two lines cut by a transversal would be these lines and that. Uh, those are same side interior angles. We could say they're supplementary, but that doesn't really help all that much. Typically, the thing that you're going to want to do is break your shape up into triangles. You can hopefully show congruent triangles, and then you can use that to get the angles you need congruent to show that you have parallel lines. So I'm going to draw segment TW at that auxiliary line, and that's true because two points determine a segment. And notice now that my parallel lines form a Z shape, an upright Z shape. We can see that right here. And as a result, I have a pair of alternate interior angles that will be congruent. So I can say that angle ETW is congruent to angle XWT. And I can write this in the short form if I want. I can say that parallel lines imply congruent alternate interior angles. Pretty easy to write that down. And as a result, I've got those two congruent angles now. Uh, and I've got two congruent sides. Last thing, I have a shared side. TW is congruent to itself. That's by the reflexive property. And as a result, I can prove my two triangles congruent. Uh, I've got a side, I've got a pair of angles, and I've got another pair of sides. Side, angle, side. So I can say the triangle ETW is congruent to triangle ETW matches up with XWT. And that's by side angle side. And I need now to show that TX is parallel to EW. Remember why I proved the triangles congruent. I proved those congruent to get angles that I can use to show that the lines are parallel. Um, this time I have a sideways Z shape that involves those two lines. I need to show this angle here congruent to this angle over on this side. So those are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Angle XTW is congruent to angle EWT. XTW, EWT. Those are correspond corresponding parts of congruent triangles that are congruent. And now I can conclude that those lines are parallel. Again, I've got alternate interior angles being formed right here with those two congruent lines with that Z shape there. So I can say that TX is parallel to EW because my congruent alternate interior angles imply that the lines forming them are parallel. And my proof is complete. This proof gives me a pair of parallel lines. You can see I have these marked in the problem. Two congruent segments and another pair of congruent segments. Um, I'm supposed to prove that this other pair of lines, EB and DC, are also parallel to each other. You prove lines parallel by proving some type of angle pairs congruent. Alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, alternate exterior angles, those types of options. Um, so I'm going to try to prove the triangles congruent because the triangles nearly look congruent and I know that the parallel lines can give me a pair of congruent angles if I play my cards right. So uh, if you notice I have this line parallel to this line and I have two possible transversals. I have a transversal that cuts here. Uh, I do see a Z shape, but it would be this angle here congruent to this angle here, which doesn't really seem to do anything. So I'm thinking that's probably not 
the pair of alternate interior angles I'd be using, uh, or at least the pair of angles I'd use at this point in the problem. So I come back and I look at this transversal here, and notice I have two angles in the same position on the two triangles that fall along that transversal. Uh, so that is actually going to be my transversal. And notice specifically that this angle here and that angle there are formed by those two lines. Notice one is interior, one is exterior, same position. Those are corresponding angles. I know that congruent, uh, I know that if lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are congruent. So I'm going to say that angle EAB is congruent to angle DBC. Parallel lines imply congruent corresponding angles. Now, the two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. I've got a pair of congruent sides, and I've got those angles there. So I can go ahead and prove my triangles congruent. Triangle EAB is congruent to triangle DBC by side, angle, side. And now I can use those congruent triangles to get congruent angles. I want to prove this line parallel to this line over here. And I need angles that will allow me to do that. Uh, once again, it looks like there's a pair of alternate interior angles, but they're angles that don't match up in the triangles. Once again, I have this transversal cutting across the bottom. Okay, and by the way, if you have trouble seeing this, you can also go separately and you can draw those two lines separately. There's E, and it hits B down there. Uh, here's D, and it hits C. And you can cut across, and you can kind of match up positions. Uh, and I can see, for example, that this angle and this triangle matches up with that angle and that triangle. And in my little simplified diagram here, it's that angle and that angle. Uh, you can see that those two angles there are corresponding angles. Uh, for those two lines uh, with that transversal. And so, once again, I have a pair of corresponding angles congruent. So I'm going to state that angle EBA is congruent to angle DCB. Those are corresponding parts of congruent triangles that are congruent. And now I can finish. Those are a pair of corresponding angles. You can see them there and there, then in the same positions on the two lines. Uh, if my corresponding angles are congruent, it means that the lines forming them are going to be parallel. And so I conclude that EB is parallel to DC, and that's because congruent corresponding angles implies parallel lines. And that finishes the proof.